Hey everyone, uh, today we're going to look at welding thin aluminum. By thin, I mean uh, 63 thousandths. It's 3003H14. We're going to be using a 16th inch 1100 filler rod. So this is the material we're welding here. Um, I've got it set up, uh, ready to tack. And the first things to note in welding this thin aluminum uh, that I've learned if you're trying to weld out in a flat area on this thin stuff, you're going to get heat distortion in most cases. I always try to position my welds close to bins like this corner. Um, if it's in a panel on a car, I try to place my welds at, at high crown areas. And uh, those are easier to finish. And the high crown, the, the uh, spring in the metal absorbs and restricts the heat distortion. Okay, so what I mean by that is we can look here on this roof. Um, there's a weld right here. And I've chosen that area of the roof to weld this B pillar in below it because it's the shortest distance uh, for these two panels to come together it's also got a nice radius in it that was easy to finish. And as you can see, the weld is uh, almost invisible to the naked eye. So the weld that you're looking at through here, these two panels were brought together. I tacked it with the TIG welder, and then I came back and gas welded between my tacks uh, section by section. And I like to, as I've said in other videos, bounce around between welds, so I'll do a section here, come down here, to keep the heat distortion at a, a minimum. And you can see after just 400 grit, 800 grit, and a base polish, um, it's getting there, it's, it's getting close. You can so, see uh, it's flush out here at this end. So I'm gonna place my first tack right here. I like to just hold the panels butt it up together, flush against each other without any gap in them, and then do quick tacks uh, with not a lot of penetration, just to get that panel locked in place. I have a stainless brush. In a lot of cases, if I know the material could have oils in it, I will uh, dip this in acetone and rub, rub acetone into the seam while I'm brushing. So with this little Miller diversion welder, uh, I found that on 63 thousandths material running 85 amps with no uh, heat sink backer. Now a heat sink is something you can put behind the aluminum that allows the heat to absorb and makes your welding easier. For example, if I were to have this joint on uh, this thick aluminum plate, uh, I'd have to crank my amperage up because it's acting as if this is a part of the material being welded. So here is our first tack weld. Um, you can see we have a nice clean fitment along the panel. And we're going to uh, go ahead and just lay a bead all the way along here. So when I'm setting up here, I'm gonna brace my hand on this little clamp I have out here. I'm gonna set up so that I can do a full sweep along the seam. I'm gonna brace my other hand out here on the table and you can see I've got my tungsten and my torch right in a nice position to go ahead and lay that bead. I, I heat this material up, wait for the puddle, and um, very quickly and lightly, and you just uh, get into a rhythm of dip and move, dip and move. Now, you hear guys talk about stacking dimes. Uh, being a panel shaper, stacking dimes is going to make your life a little bit unpleasant when you go to start um, dressing your panels because you're gonna have to file and knock all the knock all those dimes off you want nice puddles you want uh, 
in panels specifically, you want kind of long and good penetrated uh, puddles. So we're going to start out, wait for it to puddle here. I'm kind of welding away from myself now. And then I'm going to go real quick off the end. So here's the face of this bracket we just welded. Now the actual side that will be shown is this side here and you can see we have penetration coming through at the ends. Uh, but what I'm going to do now, and this is what I do on my body panels as well, I'll come back and I'll pull that weld through by uh, baking the back side of it here. Um. So here's the face of the weld after going over the top of it, pulling it through. And uh, now we'll just clean the rest of this um, bracket up and it'll be ready to mount. I just finished uh, making up the second bracket here. And a couple of things to note. When I'm welding into this valley, I like to get the uh, tungsten right down in close to that joint. and. I'm not using filler rod when I'm pulling that weld through, but I'm just giving a slight waving motion back and forth and just pulling the puddle along, giving a good uh, pull through of the material of the, of the uh, filler that I initially welded on the other side. So a 45 degree angle to the joint is what I'm looking at here. And then I like to keep just a real slight angle to push the weld along like this. On the back side on my initial weld, it'll be a little hot. Again, I like to keep the uh, tungsten at about a 45 to this 90 degree joint. I'm heating both pieces of material at the same time and getting them to puddle evenly. You'll notice when you start welding aluminum, if you don't have a tight joint or if they're not puddling together initially, they, they just want to run away from each other and that's that cratering that you'll get. So these two brackets are uh, for a battery hold down and what we're going to do next is just uh, lighten them up a little bit as if they're not already light enough. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and drill out some lightning holes like they would do in period uh, 1950s style. So here we go. So here's the battery strap mocked up in the car, get an idea of what it looks like there.